unconventional functionality in a convenient polymer package. Spray, pray, repeat as necessary. Hi, Six Snipes and Squad once again. As of NWI's releasing of the all-new Operation Breakaway update on the 6th, Insurgency's been blowing up. In good ways. And bad. Regardless of either, I've been eager to hop in and check out a couple things. Above all else, the guns, the FAMAS, and the AUG. Names which make every good COD kid tear up with nostalgia. Countless requests from you guys to cover these have shown up in my comments, but don't worry, I'm not completely stupid. I know that both you guys and the algorithm demand that I make a video of this out of community interest, so I'm happy to provide what you want. That and it's gonna net me a lot of views. So without any further rambling from me, I present to you the first of the two, the much-anticipated FAMAS, and this is Gun Guy. The FAMAS F1 or Fusil d'assaut de la Manufacture d'Armes de Saint-Etienne is a service rifle contracted and produced specifically for the French Army. New Age technology of the 70s and post-war refinement of the firearm allowed them to make what was one of many notable rifles with a chassis composed primarily of polymer rather than metal. Light, functionally diverse, and geared for a new era of conflict, this would be one of the definitive models of classical rifles making its way into countless video games. In Rainbow Six Siege, the FAMAS is known for being a rapid-fire shredder of an assault rifle. In Battlefield 4, the FAMAS is known for being a rapid-fire shredder of an assault rifle. In Insurgency Sandstorm, the FAMAS is known for being a rapid-fire shredder of an assault rifle. Don't you love the diversity behind which developers express a single gun? Having used the FAMAS for the grand total of a day, I can now safely assess the fine-tuned features of this weapon and break down exactly what pros and cons will suffer from using it. In a word, this gun is obnoxious. It's obnoxious to use, the recoil is obnoxious, the reload time is obnoxious, the fact that the magazine is 5 rounds shorter than average is just petty and obnoxious. I'm obnoxious! Now, people who drop the six equipment credits just to use this thing can expect to be obnoxious too. It's not that this gun is entirely unfair, it's definitely balanced out by its abhorrently uncontrollable default recoil. But once you master that element and learn yeah. to work around the sluggish reloading and optic mounting that's frankly horrible for field of vision, you'll actually find this gun is more of a high skill level benefit to your loadout. Don't get me wrong, the learning curve is steep, but once you master this gun, and believe me, I definitely haven't, you're still quite the force to be reckoned with. The rate of fire is so high you'll actually dump a mag faster than you can save. Fusil d'assaut de la Manufacture d'Armes de Saint-Etienne. In fact, it's higher than the MP7 and the AS Val, formerly the fastest guns in the game, with the key difference being that it's shooting rounds that aren't baby bullets and have a penetration value that's actually significant to be launching at 1,000 rounds per minute. Oh, and by the way, this is actually less than what it fires at in real life. What? Needless to say, this one's going on the S tier list for plenty of players to come. Now because of the substantial recoil and frankly horrible ammo economy, I'm going to recommend you do a couple things. First, this gun, unlike every single other gun in the game with the only exception being the MP5A5, can toggle between auto, semi-auto, as well as three round burst. Now I cannot stress this enough. Use this. The rate of fire leaves even the lightest of tap firing, hosing five or so rounds downrange per click. The ability to narrow this down to an effective three, more than enough to kill a guy with one burst, is going to help. A lot. Second, suppressors and scopes. They neutralize the strongest attribute of this gun, being a CQB animal. The comically inaccurate suppressor, why is it wrapped in toilet paper, is both long and cumbersome. Sure, you can work around it, however it's already a six stock gun, do you really want to drop what's probably your last three credits on something that makes it quieter? Save yourself the weight, invest in flashbangs instead, you'll need them. Scopes are pointless when the gun kicks this much, drop them and stick to close quarters where you're way more effective anyways. If you need to go at range, just use the aforementioned burst fire. Third, the new master keys? Yeah, don't use them. Not on this gun. The pump action shotgun is fun. It is, but it's also a lot of money. Four credits actually, plus another two for the laser you basically need because you can't aim with a shotgun and you've literally doubled the cost of a gun to make it have something only effective at the range it excels at anyways. Switching off to this thing makes you kill slower and requires more precision when you can just hose two or more guys down with a single magazine. I can't tell you how many times it didn't do what the gun you're given does to begin with. The performance is just as pretty as the product currently in the menu. Ooh, wait till you see the. F <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. 
Now, you might at this point be expecting me to compare this to the AUG, which was also added in the game at the same time, but I find that rather unfair. Coming in at half the price, not even similar functionality, the AUG doesn't accomplish the same thing as the FOMAS and is clearly built with ranged combat in mind, given its various custom optics. <clears throat> not to alarm you or anything, but you can put a 7 times size sniper scope on the AUG. For absolutely no reason. That would be like trying to compare the agent to the Apache. While yes, they're both fantastically effective assets, they don't even try to accomplish the same thing. A more accurate comparison is the VHS-2, a similar security rifle which up until now I honestly thought was the FAMAS, given the various similarities like bullpup design, caliber, the carry handle iron sights with a charging mechanism under it, even the protruding barrels look too close. The performance isn't that different either. Now the VHS suffers from about 150 rounds per minute less than the FAMAS, not to mention less penetration, velocity, and individual shot performance as a whole. However, with significantly more stable recoil patterns and actually sensical capacity at 5 rounds more, you'll find that this offers a much better and controllable precision burst weapon. Overall, I would say this is the most competitive counter pick given that it's within the same basic class as the FAMAS anyways. Finally, it is a proven fact that using this with both the new Urban Camo Skin and Skeletor Cosplay Uniform increases your performance and boosts your accuracy by 50%. You blundering fool! Don't let me see your mangy hide around here again! Back up, muscle boy! You're all fools if you think you can stop me! True fact, look it up. Bonus points if you do the voice. That just about wraps up my thoughts and advice on this gun. It's a whole lot of fun for a whole lot of money. A high roller, high shooter, and more than any of those things, a high skill curb utility. But use the money and use the gun right, and you've got yourself one strong CQP supplement, especially for a rifleman. If you've made it this far through the video, thank you. I hope you like the content and encourage you to like and subscribe for more. I'm gonna have a pretty busy week outside of the channel, but I hope to have the video on the AUG done before it's over. Until then, I've been Six Snipes, and this has been Gun Guide. I'll see you out there in Breakaway.